Training Centre at Wolston for the New Zealand Fire Service and we're running approximately 200 courses a year and uh, putting through some 15 to 1700 students on average per year. We have increased the course numbers from around 50 when I first started there to over 200 at the present time. We have added more lecture rooms twice, we have added a roof beam to the complex, we have increased the training trucks and equipment and training officer numbers have actually doubled. At this point in time it is possible to have even six courses running in one weekend, uh, all in different locations or perhaps two at the training centre and the rest district based training. This includes coordination of a lot of extra training officers from within paid staff as well as the present training officers employed. During this time with all these improvements we have worked days, weekends, nights, we have worked all hours. We have just had a ball. Do you have any adult teaching qualifications? During my career as a training officer, I have gained a certificate in adult teaching. I am a New Zealand Fire Service Assessor. I maintain the GTE status for the fire service in the Transalpine region. I'm also 4098 NZQA Assessor. Qualified and teach many courses that I'm an assessor for. During my career, the fire service actually trained their own managers. Much of this was done at the old fire service college in Island Bay. But apart from that, we had some separate ones where they actually came to stations and gave us some private training from private organisations outside the fire service, including body language courses, courses in report writing, courses in conflict management and the like. There was many, many courses during this period and much of my uh, management skills have also been picked up by observing other managers uh, and using the skills that they had during their career as well. In 45 years I've seen a lot of managers come and a lot of managers go, some good, some bad. Without a doubt the most successful managers have been the ones that care about the people. A manager that manages policies will have trouble with the people. And a manager that manages people, the policies will look after themselves. People are our biggest asset and must be cared for, nurtured and encouraged to grow. Prior to joining NSC we did a lot of decentralised training with the volunteer brigades within the Nelson West Coast area. During this period of time we engaged the local Polytech to take us on courses of adult teaching and went through many weeks of tutoring through the local Polytech in Nelson. What's an ECME, Gary? SME. SMEs are subject matter experts. In the days when TAPS was just starting, we had a lot of subjects that we had to cover to, to bring it all under the umbrella of TAPS. TAPS has been a, a great thing, especially for volunteers. It's put order into the training system. At the beginning, we had to have people that knew their subjects. And what would happen is a program would come out, the writers of the program would put it all together, and they'd send it out to SMEs, which is subject matter experts who would critique it, correct it, add things or take things out. I've been privileged to be a uh, subject matter expert in a lot of things and at present I am part of a team that is putting together what they call live fire policy, which is to bring everything under the umbrella such as uh, roof beat, container firefighting, house burns and extinguishing use all under one umbrella so that instead of people using different terms for the same sorts of thing that would bring all the terms together as one. Do brigades come to you for any issues other than training? Training officers seem to be the do all and fix all. In the past and even up to the present time I have been requested by brigades to go out and talk to brigades re problems with personnel and or training and have had to sort out one or two of their problems for them or given advice so that they can sort them out themselves. They do not want it to become official through the regional management teams as this may bring disrepute onto their brigades. Most days at the training centre 
we have a number of visitors, generally up to a dozen, uh, calling in to sort out small problems, training problems, problems with staff, problems with equipment, requesting equipment for training, requesting personnel for training evolutions and or training officers to do particular jobs or fulfil the needs of those brigades. We are one of the busiest centres in the country. We have always maintained that the door is open for people to come in and talk to us and we can help them any way we can. Have you ever prepared an annual training program? At the training centre we often get telephone calls or we make visits to brigades to assist them in formulating an annual training program. This we put in conjunction with our own training program that we have set up for the region so that it coordinates all the TAPS programs starting from recruits, travelling through QF, senior firefighter and officer. Have you ever done training needs analysis? We still use training needs analysis today where we go around the brigades asking the relevant questions, hitting the requirements and then putting together a system that will meet the requirements of that particular brigade or as a whole all brigades within the region. To do this uh, it takes a great deal of time. We bring it all back to the training centre, collate the figures, collate the needs and put together a program that will suit both the budget and the needs of the region. How can we get the silver ferns to come along here to do a bit of training? The silver ferns, a day that was enjoyed by both students, participants from the silver ferns and the training officers and we have the good feedback, the fact they want to return and do it again this year. So that will be something that I will have to look at very closely as last time we had the use of small short ladders during the course and the girls were tall enough to the point where they didn't need the ladders at all. Do you ever try and so improve training and development programs? Continually. We look at things we can do better, easier, faster, more efficiently. After every training course uh, we look at these things or during the courses we look at these things and say could we do this better, how could we do it better. Everything that you do can probably be done better and this is an ongoing process. The five service values like integrity and skill and comradeship, do you teach any of that in your training? You can only teach that by example, you will earn it. Integrity and credibility go hand in hand. If you have these values, then honesty and ethics, good ethics, will follow. You do not gain these values by wearing the fire service uniform alone. You have to earn these values. If you have some integrity, then it's worth fighting for. And if you believe in some of the things that the fire service stands for, such as integrity, skill, comradeship, loyalty. For instance, loyalty is something that you earn as well, that if somebody believes in something strong enough, they will support the other person. I believe that comradeship is something that also is a two-person thing. It has to go from you for you to get something back. I believe that you must support people through the tough times as well as the good times. Things are changing all the time. New equipment, new methods, new technology, changing very quickly and a training officer has to move with the times. The Transalpine region has featured in uh, New Zealand National Geographic. The seven day recruit course with myself at the helm has featured in a trucking magazine New Zealand wide. Also I've been nominated for in an article in the International Fire and Rescue magazine which is produced in England as one of the top trainers in the world. Do you like your job? Love it. Single answer. My philosophies are if you're enjoying what you're doing and the people are having fun and they're learning fast and that's what the whole establishment is about, is about people learning rather than people teaching.